Thank you, Chair, and uh, welcome, Commissioner. Uh, only two points now. You've covered many of the others. Uh, and, and this is like, you know, about tax, and you mentioned that, you know, state aid rules do inhibit the way you can approach it. It tends to be case by case. I do think this is, this is a problem because it doesn't really enable us to move on to a fairer tax regime if everything has to be by case by case, this approach. And, and I think, you know, let, let me just kind of give you an example. I mean, you, you've already touched on blacklisted ta tax havens, but I think it would be helpful if we could have an approach which was much more structured. And let's look at the audit sector, which you haven't spoken about. And, you know, there are more and more questions and louder calls that we need to address this because, you know, from a competition perspective and given the continuous role as a facilitator of tax evasion schemes, don't you believe that the audit services and activities should be legally separated from a financial and tax advisory <coughs> element? And my second point is really totally uh, separate. It's about big IT companies and their impact. And I really applaud what you've said, that we've got to make sure that good competition can help shape globalization. And, and I know you've been very vocal on this, that we have to intervene to keep the free market uh, working. But in the US, you know, we've now got Democrats picking this up in terms of their next election manif uh, sort of election uh, campaign, that we should have competition tools are uh, able to address digital companies. But I also want you to look eastwards, where we're seeing rise of very big uh, data companies, IT companies like Alibaba and Tencent, who have just overtaken today from Facebook as one of the biggest companies. So I think, you know, these things just come upon us before we, you know, as legislators, as regulators, as lawmakers really have time to address them. So are you looking at this? Do you think there needs to be a really a separation? So thank you. Well, on the, on the latter question, uh, I think it's about behavior. Um, because if you have also from this very big company a behavior that in the very fundamentals respects competition on the merits, then, then newcomers still have a choice uh, to enter the market, to invest in innovation, to present their innovation to customers. Uh, ten years ago, these businesses were not the biggest businesses uh, on our earth. Uh, we don't know what, what will be the situation in ten years from now. Uh, what comes into mind is, of course, what, uh, what Mr. Ferpe, uh were discussing uh, very early on. How does a data-driven economy allow for competition? And that, of course, we will keep looking at very, very closely so that the, the fact that some of these data holds enormous amounts of data doesn't become a barrier to entry. Uh, but I think it is in, in the supervision of the behavior in the marketplace that we can make sure that it's still open. And of course, it is a paradox that, that in order to have open markets, we have to interfere. Uh, because if we don't interfere in, in the marketplace, well, the risk is that it just closes down. And we end up in a situation where we have monopolies basically uh, um, serving the market in the way uh, now they choose to do. Um, when it comes to, to, uh, to the, the question of, of how to have uh, a fair uh, tax regime, uh, you're absolutely right uh, that sort of the state aid case-by-case -case approach uh, will not do that. It is, it is only part of the solution. Uh, and this is why uh, we in the Commission have, have made this sort of the comprehensive approach to say, well, well how, how to deal with this, uh, as you're also saying, in a structured manner. Uh, because this, what happens when the state aid cases, well, I think they, 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 of course, make sure that we live up to the treaty, that no selective advantages are handed out. Uh, we also see, and I, I hope that, uh, that, that it serves as an inspiration, uh, for instance, uh, the fiat case cannot be uh, redone uh, because Luxembourg changed their rules uh, on financing companies. 
Uh, in Cyprus, they have done the same. They also changed the rules on, on uh, financing companies. Uh, in uh, Ireland, they have changed the rules on, uh, on double Irish structures. So you have the individual cases. You have member states changing their rules on their own initiatives. And then you have exactly sort of the structural approach with the legislation presented by, by my colleague, uh, Pia Moscovici. Uh, and some of the latest is, of course, to look into the responsibility of those who enable because these schemes, they are extremely complex. And it's not to say something bad about board members or presidents of boards, but they are not constructed in the boardroom. They, they are constructed by tax advisors, uh, uh, people who, who have the expertise in doing this. Uh, and we would like to say, well, you have a responsibility of alerting authorities if you are asked to, to engage in aggressive tax avoidance. Uh, because it is very important also to, to get sort of uh, transparency and openness when it comes to, to the middlemen. Uh, and this is indeed a structural approach. Uh, what we need is, of course, for each and every member state to work with us to make this happen. Um, and more things that I think one would ever imagine has happened over the last three years. But more things need to happen because we still have legislation which is not passed. Uh, take the legislation on a corporate consolidated, uh, common, con con common consolidated corporate tax base. We need that to happen. Uh, I think we need also public country by country reporting because we need transparency. We need to change. And the good thing about all the leaks is that it shows that things are changing. I think we will have more leaks. I think citizens will find that what is, what is this? What is going on? And the leaks will show the change that we need. One of the most under-debated issues, though, is implementation. Because one thing is passing legislation. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, that you actually implement full scale. That tax authorities in each and every member state have the resources, have the skills, can hire the people they need to make use of information can make use of these new uh, tools that they get. Uh, and that, of course, is something I think is very important for any legislator to follow. When legislation is passed and it's difficult enough, is it then also implemented? Uh, and I hope that, that uh, we can work on, on doing this, of course, knowing and respecting that this is a question for unanimity in the Council. But that doesn't leave the, the European Parliament unemployed. Uh, on the contrary, look at the work done in, in the different committees, look at the work done here, and I think there is a great potential of also doing the follow-up to see that legislation is actually implemented and used for the benefit of all the people who do pay their taxes today.